I just had a conversation with a man and made me realize how truly confusing it must be to be a man trying to interact with women. This man thought that I hated him. Simply because I wouldn't talk to him, I wouldn't look at him, I wouldn't get, I just generally would not acknowledge his existence. And while that is how I would act towards somebody I don't really care for, that's a true Taurus energy, I also act that way towards people I like. You gotta hear me out now. Y'all know what it feels like to have a crush when you're looking forward to seeing them and you're just looking and like everything they do is just perfect and then you get to know them. Sometimes you just gotta let beautiful things be. A crush only stays a crush if you never talk to them, you never look at them, you never get to know them. And that's just what I'm trying to do. But also, that man could also be my husband and I'm blocking my blessing because he could be perfect. That kind of messed me up. He could be perfect, but he could also be the worst thing that ever happened to me. Because all the worst times in my life were due to a man. <laughs> and I'm enjoying my life right now. I'm having fun. I'm in good. I'm sleeping hard. Got to worry about nobody cheating on me. Nobody's actions can make me feel any type of way. And I don't know if I want to risk that. This was supposed to be funny. Maybe I should talk to that man. No, I didn't do that. Nope. Yeah, leave that man alone. But anyway, home. I just understand. I understand how ghetto and how confusing and how frustrating it could be to be a man or trying to interact with women. Because okay, sometimes 2 plus 2 equal 4. Sometimes 2 plus 2 equal 27. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, leave that man alone. I don't got the answer. Yeah. I just have Leave that man alone. He don't need none of that crazy in his life. At all. But the weird thing is I understand where she's coming from. You can have a crush on somebody, and then when you get to know them, you be like, ew. Will you ever in love with me? No. Seriously. What was that? Uh, Sorry. What was the least favorite thing about me? Why you went on I'm this impressed. show? At what point was the relationship over for you? It must have been the bit where you cheated. What have you told your new significant other about me? That you're a Oh my god. You're just a waste of my time. What's your biggest regrets about our relationship? Me cheating. I regret cheating on someone, but I just don't regret cheating on you. Because I don't feel that anyone should be cheated on, but... Bruh. That's how I felt at the time. What was the worst thing I did in bed? Your sex. Sex kind of shit. I think that's the worst thing. Just, just couldn't please me enough. Uh, were you ever in love with me? First off, why do y'all be going on these shows with y'all ex-girlfriends? Secondly, she's in there trying to cut this open with a knife. Everything that you could tell a man that would hurt his pride, she said. She told a man he can't dress, and she told him his sex was trash. Don't no grown-ass man want to hear that his sex trash. Even if you know that your, your strokes is subpar, you don't want to hear that shit. You want your woman to gas you up. Give me that full 93. High-octane petrol, please. I was out exploring the desert when I found this little community. When I went in there, there was nobody around, but one of the places that I noticed that was very odd was this shed. And if you look in between the shed and that circle thing, there's a cinder block wall. So I decided to walk to the other side of it, and I noticed that the cinder block wall also was on the back side of this little hut. So when Bro. I went inside this little hut, I noticed that the back wall just did not go with the rest of this little place. Bro, hold on, bro. Bro. I keep telling y'all, bro. White folks are fearless. I'm going to just get a shirt that's, that says that. White folks are fearless, bro. This have the makings of a horror movie. Let me ask, let me ask the people of the uh, African-American community. The people of the African-American community. If you pull up on an abandoned community and you see that little hut right there that look like it might be a torture shed because I'm pretty sure that's where he going with that. What are you doing? I know what I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm gone. Scratch! I'm I'm the fuck up out of there. You know what he did? He went to investigate. He went to investigate. <laughs> so when I grabbed onto the shelf and pulled, it revealed a secret passage. Uh, yeah, that was cool. So I had to go back to my truck, cool. grab my flashlight. And when I came back, he went back I went to the truck. The tunnel. Now, when I first went in the tunnel, I noticed that there was a chair with a man's coat on it. 
immediately I thought, Bruh. this is crazy. I wonder how many people have been tied up, beaten, and tortured on that chair and possibly killed. Uh, it's just not normal to see a secret passage in the middle of the desert. Now, the back room was just covered in all this horrible pornography. And it's not just naked people. We're talking about hardcore pornography where people are being beaten and tortured, uh, whips and chains. It was very weird. Inside the room, there was alcohol, <laughs> bottles of powder, weird items everywhere. Inside some of the buckets, there was dirt and trash, but also items that I thought would be used for torture, uh, needle pliers, and screwdrivers, and hammers, and other things like that. I was out exploring the desert when I... Certain things I see on the internet never cease to amaze me. Like, but at the same time, a lot of the things that we enjoy now or we find entertaining, we probably wouldn't have found entertaining if we had didn't have somebody like this. And says he's upset with me because in his words, sweetie, you need to stop spending so much money on DoorDash. Ordering it three times a day is not appropriate and we need to start living within our means. Honey... It sounds like you have an income problem, not that I have a spending problem. Start earning more money and we won't have these issues. So. First off, I don't know if y'all know who this lady is. She has a show similar to Funny Marco's show where, like, she just be annoying throughout the whole interview. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really care for her show. And after seeing this video, I don't really care for her neither. Um, when you get married, it's a partnership. It's, it's a team effort. If your husband is telling you that he's concerned about the amount of money you're spending, why would you... Why would you come at him like that? It sounds like you have an income problem. You need to make more money. I'm pretty sure she makes good money... With her podcast. I am 100% sure she makes good money with her podcast. So, as a matter of fact, I'm going to let the video finish before I say what I want to say. I took his credit card that we share, and I booked a vacation for my daughter Richard and I. We're staying in a hotel tonight, and I hope he enjoys that I charged $8,000 to his credit card. Make more money, darling. My husband says he's upset with me because... In that's crazy. I knew she was a bitch in real life. No, fuck it. I ain't even gonna sit here and flex. The most I made in one night, and this was just last year, which is crazy. My first time when I first started dancing, I made five bands in one night, but just last year, I jumped in a bag and I made 14000 in one night off one person. All blues. I'll show you the video. It was crazy. 14,000? 14,000 in all blues. What do you want after that? What, what was the story you after that? You just did a lap dance. 5,000. No, fuck it. She got to be capping. She got to be capping. He had to clap them cheeks afterwards. Ain't no way I'm dropping 14,000. First off, I'm not dropping 14,000 just to clap some cheeks. But if I do drop 14,000, I better get them cheeks. Time out. Do you know what you could do with fourteen thousand dollars? I'm gonna be honest with you. When I go to the strip club, and I, you can go back from videos ten years ago. Well, how long I've been doing YouTube? Two thousand sixteen. You can go back to videos of me just talking about going to the strip club, and I said the same thing. When I go in there, I pay for parking, and I pay for. I pay for parking, I pay to get in, 
and I get the food. To me, the greatest thing that comes out of strip clubs is the food. I don't know what it is. I don't know what type of ingredients they be adding to them fish sandwiches and them fries. But that should be delicious. If I if I get a lap dance, I might twenty dollars for the song. Here you go. That's that's about it. I'm not paying, bruh. Why am I paying that money for you to tease me? Like what is what is that? You feel me? And then it's a it's a certain stupid ass mentality behind that shit too, cause like you will literally pay all that money to show other in the room that they can do that. So you cashing out on a that's teasing you to show other that you can afford to do that. That's stupid. I can't wait till my YouTube channel like really blow up. Now I'm just motivated to blow up so I can show y'all what to do with that excessive amount of money. Because when you do YouTube, you do have excessive amount of money. And like, you liable to do some stupid shit like that. The only reason why your black ass would be able to come over to America and be able to do anything is because of the hard work, the, the blood, the sweat, the fighting and the dedication of African Americans who on this soil changed this land. African Americans are the ones who got this country integrated. Let me explain something to you. White people in this country did not give us anything. We have had to take. We took in the 1960s. We took their lynchings, their terrorizing, their burning down of our neighborhoods, and we continue to rebuild and rebuild and revisit and retwist and re-rise up what it is that we have done in this country. And the only reason why anybody can bring their black ass over here from another mother effing country is because what black Americans have done on this land. And I'm saying this as a person who is bicultural, whose father is not American, don't on it. My father is an immigrant, and he was able to come to this country and do something in this country because of the black people who fought, who died, who bled, who were lynched on this land. So don't sit your black ass over there in some other goddamn country talking about what you would do in America. The only reason why your black ass can even get the F over here is because of what we have done. Doggone it. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. The only reason... Yo, she started off so calm, and it went zero to a hundred real quick. But she has a point. I have immigrants. I have immigrant parents, and I do feel as though immigrant parents judge Americans very harshly. I'm talking from experience because I do have immigrant parents, but my best friend is Nigerian, okay? And she's basically going off of Nigerians. And he has said some stuff to me about his people. He basically was saying, he, matter of fact, I can't even say Nigerians. It's Africans. Like, a lot of African people do feel as though they're better than African Americans. I remember him telling me this in high school. He said, the worst type of Nigerian is a Nigerian with money. And as I got older, I started really, like, seeing it play out. You could tell when a, when a Nigerian man, especially a Nigerian man, you could tell when a Nigerian man got some money, bro. Because the way he looked down on people is crazy. It is crazy. And here's, here's the kicker, though. He gonna hit me for saying this. Here's the kicker. Because my boy makes some bread now. He always find a way to get to that money. Sometimes, <laughs> we be talking, and his inner Nigerian be coming out. <laughs> The same shit he was telling me about in high school, sometimes it be coming out and he be doing it. African Americans in this country have been through a lot. They have seen a lot. I've said Africans in all countries have been through a lot, including my country in Grenada. Like, we were slaves in Grenada too, so don't, don't sleep. But as far as enjoying the life that black Americans enjoy now, they went through a lot.